Jason, how are we seeing this one from the get-go? These two teams, they know each other. They probably play together in local, local competitions. They're evenly matched if you look at the way they've progressed over the three days. This, this is probably going to go down to the first try score. Like this could, this they totally evenly matched through every stat and every metric. Well, that is the big call, and we've certainly seen it play out so far. That first try can be so very important. That's how Newcastle found their way in that previous match into the grand final, winning 9-8, having scored the first try. Here are the Renegades side trying to do exactly that. The Berryman can go nowhere on that occasion, so change over hit. And Manly get first use. Of the ball, short pass provided. Some pressure comes in there from Wilson. Nice touch made. Big dummy. Play on is the call here for Halliday, who's been so dangerous throughout the tournament so far. Bouncing around like a spring chicken is Grace French. French again, plotting and probing. They roll it back here. Play on for Wignall. Wignall, oh, there was a little touch on the hand there. Jeez, I think that might be a tough call. She wasn't even looking at the ball there, though, Jason. Yeah, could have gone uh, probably a little bit lucky there for Manly to get that one, and they'll be looking to see if they can uh, make Northern Beaches uh, pay on this first set. French won't get a chance to do that, though. It's an incorrect roll ball, so change over straight away for the Renegades. Only about a minute and a half gone, already being played at a frantic pace, though. Yeah, it's a it's a really, uh, really good start to the grand final, and I'd... I suppose to help set this one up or to give the um, give the viewers a bit of sort of perspective of what's going on here, Walsham was probably the pick of the um, of the country teams here at Junior State Cup. Manly uh, beat uh, Walsham in the round games, five tries to four, could have gone either way. Northern Beaches have then beat Walsham in the semi final on the first try score, like pretty much even tries, three each. So this is like really evenly matched, and I guess Walsham unlucky not to be here in the GF as well. Here is Vera, working it forward. Now a run there from Smythe, as it comes away here through Van der Raiden. Last play now for Manly. Smythe had pace, off the left foot, nearly got through them. Good work though. A nice saving touch with the dive there from Layla McDougall. They'll be marched upfield here as well. So a nice little jump start for the set for the Northern Beaches Renegades. No tries yet, no points on the board. That first try can be crucial. After three minutes here, we are still at nil all. Three points on the offering for the side that can cross the stripe first. Renegades up towards halfway. Touch is made there. A strong one for that matter from Smythe. Here come the Renegades girls at pace. Bosland, Bosland links up. All oh, the dummy came out. They read it well, though. Berryman thought she'd fooled them on that occasion. Yeah, great save there from the from the Manly winger. And when you see teams like this where they where they know each other, they've probably matched up previous times before. Often there's a fair bit of anticipation in the defence. And sometimes they're almost anticipating or guessing, like they know what's coming. So in these sorts of games, sometimes those plays against the flow, like against the run of play, you know, a sweeper to the right but attack the left, that sort of thing, generally is what, you know, gets the defence off balance. So Calms works it forward. And now Halliday, such a dangerous customer. Halliday puts on the dummy. She certainly did get caught, though. She thought she was off for the prize. Certainly not the case. Both sides, as you mentioned, Jason Stenner, just so evenly matched in this one. Yeah, it's a pretty even contest, and and, we, and we've been talking about the um, about the battles of the midfield in these sorts of um, big games, and generally whoever controls it around halfway here, whoever's crossing over earlier in their touch count, second or third, rather than fourth or fifth, generally get control of the game. And but so far, evenly matched in that area as well, Joe. Absolutely the case, and Manly also making the touch, and we've had our first referee stumble on the main stadium for three days. Oh, how good does it get? You I know missed. it's a grand final when there's a referee falling over. Oh, I missed it. Who was it, James? I always, I, I think I like a referee stumble. I do, I do like one. Was that? I think our referees John Clark, Ben Harris, and Savannah Draper there in the middle. Hasn't she been outstanding this tournament? Certainly has. As the Renegades also look to launch their first raid on the line here. Halliday, however, came across and made a clutch play there to just get the touch in time. And it will be a changeover in favour of the Manly Seagulls here. So about five minutes gone. The wind also starting to pick up here at Dubbo. That could make things a bit more interesting. Yeah, definitely with some of the longer passes. When it, when it, when it gets a bit gusty, sometimes 
in these bigger games, it's better to maybe run a trail or a follow play, like someone back on the inside, try and keep it a bit straight to get the defence collapse in a bit more, and then maybe go wider for the longer balls later in the half, or later in the you know second half of the grand final. French with nice agility and then picks it up very well on this occasion. Long pass, Grace French has set it up on a platter. Beautiful play from the Frenchie herself. Grace French, and it was a little bit subtle, and some of us might have missed it. She did something there that was absolutely superb and advanced and well beyond her years. She scooped and she had him in trouble, but rather than, than running to the short side or the gap, James, she kept running straight. She kept running straight at the offside player, then the, then the, the, the link in the wing um, from the Renegades had to collapse very late, and that enabled the the long ball up there to the top of your screen. And, gee, that was a great show of skill there. The Renegades now looking to strike back themselves. They won't get a chance to do so here. They've left the ball behind. So score remains three points to nil. One try to nil in favour of Manly. And good metres on offer here for Smythe. Up towards halfway. And a nice follow-up run as well from Wignall. They work it away from the sideline here through Vera. Good metres again. It's a lovely driving set here from the Manly team. Halliday with the dummy. In they come for the touch. Play on is the call. They've got them at sixes and sevens. They finally recovered just in time. It was looking dangerous again there for the Renegades. Yeah, the speed of the game is maintained to be quite intense. I think, I think you're going to find... I'm just trying to check. There might have been an issue with the changes here, but the referees might be just given advantage, I think, to the, um, to the Renegades and keep the flow of the game going. There was a bit of a change issue there, manly on the, on the bottom of your screen. But... Uh, Referees are going with the advantage and see whether Renegades can take take that advantage. Bosland trying to do exactly that. I think they did make a play at the ball. Yes, referees are on the spot. Saying there was a touch. So another set of six tackles, or touches should I say, to play with. So they roll the ball here. Bosland heads back towards the middle. Bosland again, straightening up. The cover though from the link there. There's Tiani Smith who didn't panic at all. No, that was good. That's an example of that, you know, that follow or the trail play where, you, you know, you run to the left and then your support player on the right follows you. Boslin, long pass. Good pressure. Nowhere to go for the wing. Turned away once more. Berryman back to the middle here with Boslin. Boslin rolls the ball. Boslin again operating down a short side. They're really intent on trying to pick the numbers apart down that narrow short. I'd like to see them swing it out to this commentary side of the ground, though. There's oodles of space there. Boslin, again, working down that short side. Now they open it up, and all of a sudden, things start to emerge for the Renegades, but a little too congested throughout that set. Yeah, and, and a, a good thing to look at when you're, if, you can, if you can have a look on your screens is one of the things that we look at is, is that if the ball stay on the top of your screen, have a look where the defensive winger is. How far up the screen are they? Like if they're three uh, quarter of the way up, halfway on that occasion, the winger was almost in the middle of the field. And that's why uh, James so rightly pointed out that they were over squeezed or over compressed. So that's something to have a look at for the rest of this final, how compressed these defensive lines are. So here is French once more trying to work an option through the middle. Boslin though made a good saving touch there, diving throughout the middle. Now it's away. Slowly but surely here. They work up field, but they've turned it over here. So Medved trying to combine and nothing doing there for Manly on that occasion. Yeah, I really like what I'm seeing here from Grace French, James. She's going to have to be one to watch. And, and just to delve a little bit deeper into how she scored that first try, what, when, you, when she scooped the ball, there was an overlap. She had an offside player and an overlap. And there's that real, um, you've got to resist the temptation of running to the gap and try and use the number. And... Uh, there's a great ball, though, from the Renegades, but I think they're going to say touch pass. Yes, it is. Yeah. So what, what happens is, James, is, is by her not running to the gap and just running straight at the offside play for a bit longer, it actually had the winger and Link thinking, well, she's going to scoop, she's not going to pass now, and they collapsed. Then she's thrown the long ball, and that, that takes years and years to teach um, our young players how to do, and she's just come out and, and shown it here. Almost made a bit of a mockery at how easy she made it look. Grace French, one to watch. Certainly one to watch. We might well see her in the... Premier League division moving forward. They roll it back here. Last play now, Van der Raiden dropped it off. They got back in time though, the Renegades. So 15 and a half to play. Certainly the Manly fans at the back of the fence aren't particularly happy with that. But I have a feeling Jason Stenton, no matter what the call is, other than a try, they're going to be doing a few boos throughout this one. I think so. I think there's a, 
Nice little manly following around here. Bit of a rival with, with Renegades. That's probably an understatement. But, um, yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, boisterous. And, yeah, you can hear them. I don't know if that's coming through on the audio. There's plenty of noise around us here. It's good to see the crowd getting involved. Well, the pride of the peninsula is at stake here. And they've left it behind, the Renegades. So they've still got work to do. And now they've got some defensive work in particular. 3 0 Manly lead. They got the early try. 15 to go. Smythe comes forward. They drop it off. And the Manly tank rings up around the ground. Morgan through the middle. Again now with Smythe. Who turns it back to the open side. Good ball here for Wignall. They supply it long. Vera for the corner. How about that for a diving effort? Jasmine goes in. Second try of the match for Manly. Absolute superb football from the Sea Eagles. And it wasn't that long ago, and you hear it often uh, in the commentary where we, you know, it wasn't that long ago where we were saying, oh, you know, can the young kids, can they throw left long on their left to right on the weaker side for most of us? And the, the skill level now is that under 12s girls all the way through to 18s, they can all throw the cutout. The one that was amazing about that, James, is she threw it in front of her. A nice flat spiralling pass in front of the winger. I don't know whether the Renegades did a lot wrong then. I don't think they did as well. The finish from Vera was superb. She caught it mid-flight, arms outstretched, diving into the in-goal area and getting the second try of the match here as they get the intercept and they are away now, the Manly side. Almost off for the prize. I think they have had a little play at that as well. Off the back of the potential runaway, Berryman with a bit of gamesmanship there, just knocking the ball out of the hands. Probably lucky not to be four subbed, actually. Yeah, a bit lucky there. Yeah, you're correct there, James. And how about the Manly fans? They're scoring right in front of them. Would that be the highlight of their weekend? I think it would be. It's been a great weekend across the last few days here in Dubbo. Beautiful conditions for football as well. Typically, we've seen if there's a touch tournament, there's also going to be a thunderstorm at some point. Fortunately, the bad weather has stayed away as French once more looks to exploit them down a short side. Now, she did a great job there, French, but they actually had the winger completely open on that occasion. Had she gone for the cutout pass, we were looking at the third try for Manly. Yeah, and I wouldn't be too worried about that if I was in the Manly coach because they were able to square up the defence again. And what we're talking about by squaring up is you'll see the players that make the touch often run on an angle back towards the try line to get back on side of where the ball's going to go. So squaring up is when you get them not to run on an angle and run directly straight, and it opens up the field. So... Manly, the last couple sets have squared up the Renegades' defence. And, oh, again, very early in the game, but the Renegades got their work cut out for them because Manly looked to be going in extra gear here. Here comes French running across field. Now, geez, I think that's an unfortunate call there because there was definitely a bit of force in the touch. I'm not necessarily suggesting forceful contact, but I would have thought that could be one of those 50-50 ones where they just say play on for that particular roll ball but the Renegades have got it now five meters into enemy territory as Dale crabs across field now they link up and look to straighten things good pressure coming up in defense though from Manly they take a little bit of time as well to get the reinforcements onto the field Boslin takes it up they come again here with Wilson good meters on this particular play and the strike dump here they come now Wilson into the fray of things but Manly again they are so resolute in defense it's impossible to breach at the moment. Yeah, and it's a great tip there for all our coaches that, um, you know, working through a whole range of divisions. Did you notice when Renegades came on there, as, as the subs were coming on, and sometimes we call that a latch or they're sweeping on, is that the Manly defence pressed. They met them when they were coming on, and they took a couple touches away from them and really strangled the energy out of that set. So that was great work from the, uh, from the Manly um, uh, coaching staff, but, you know, a really good tip for those at home. Oh, Smith with a beautiful little piece of footwork. The moment she caught the ball, she went crack off the right foot. Scott on the outside of a link for a moment before the recovery was on. She's nervous there for L. Aiken. Boslin flings it wide into the hands of Dale. Now once more they work towards that sideline to get those fresh players on the field. Yes, you see, so you'll see it here. The Renegades are uh, sweeping on and watch Manly will meet them. See how they're not rolling, they're trying to get up. Probably not as good on that occasion, but Manly generally have been doing that, which has been a big sort of reason why they're up on the scoreboard. Certainly are up on the ISC apparel scoreboard as once more the Cyclone takes effect here. We've got umbrellas really struggling in the background. A bit of a whirlwind occurring towards the Manly try line, so that could really cause a few problems for those long passes as French is back out there. She's one of those exponents of the long ball. 
She gets a nice quick roll ball here though. Medved back through the middle. They put on the afterburners. They've gone for the try line. They're just called back though. Good change of pace there. Wignall was nearly all the way through. Medved comes forward. French receives it. Good footwork. Stepping off the left again. Oh, Wignall. She just had to put the foot down and go. She didn't see the chance though. Yeah, it was a bit unexpected there. I think she almost... Uh, I don't think anyone knew what uh, French was going to do on that occasion. But she, uh, she saw the space. And unfortunately, Manly weren't able to take uh, advantage of that uh, read. Right now, I think the Renegades have about as much understanding of French as I do of the actual language French. I've got no clue other than Je m'appelle James. Right now, they're saying, Tutapel, come on. Just give me an, a chance here, Grace. Well, you're doing all right. You rattled off a bit of French there. She's offside. Uh, unlucky. Could have gone either way, that one. So probably a little bit lucky for Manly on, on that occasion. So penalty here. In favour of Manly as once more the jeers and the cheers ring out for the Seagulls fans. Here is Grace French, will very flat pass at the line there, trying to get up over the advantage line. They've succeeded in doing that through Morgan. Medved, now Taudian, who always runs very hard at the defensive line. Seven on though, they'll come back to halfway. And uh, Mitch Hawkinson was saying in the previous match, we've seen a lot of that this week, and I tend to agree with him, Jason. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been something that sometimes you, you can easily, like, like, you know, you really focus on the game and, you, you know, you really focus on the next play or what's coming up and you take your eye off the immediate task. Well, they've done a roll ball there with no one in at acting half. They finally got someone to the play the ball, but not before Manly nearly dived on it themselves. They all pushed up as one unit. And now that pressure does mount. A touch pass is called to the Renegades with an awful set there. Yeah, they're a little bit flustered, and they, you notice that the, with, with Manly getting that, that early try, that, that, I think that scoreboard pressure's been in the back of Renegade's mind, knowing, well, we need two to get this now, because the first try's worth three. They merely grab another one, and they're thinking, oh, now we need three tries. And I think it's making them probably not as patient as what they have been throughout the tournament. And um, I think I put the curse on Manly. I was just saying how good they're going, right? <laughs> Sorry, Manly. <laughs> Jason, as I said to Mitch in the previous match, it, you're not quite in the commentary booth unless you put on some kind of curse. And there we go. They won't have to do too much defending the Seagulls girls because the Renegades have turned over possession almost immediately. So now Halliday, who alongside French has been one of the key architects of the current demise the Renegades are experiencing from left to right. They pass it, Calms, Smith, now Halliday. Halliday flooding a pass over the top. Oh, Morgan, it was looming for her. I think it was a really good read. Regardless, though, from Sienna Wilson, she probably would have stopped it. And, and, and the Renegades have been strong. Um, I'm not sure, you know, whether you're in Dubbo or not, like, you know, how many games people would have caught. But Renegades have been dominant and have been a bit of the talk of the tournament throughout the last three days. But what we're seeing here with Manly is, is this, this pressing we're seeing. They're just a little bit... More, more intense, and they're upsetting the Renegades in their changeovers. Like This is third touch coming up here, or fourth. They're really stifling their attack, and Renegades haven't been able to make that adjustment. Well, this time, though, they do make a good adjustment. Here comes Berryman. Berryman puts the foot down. Smith dives and makes a crucial try-saving touch. They'll get one more play. They're still getting back on side, Manly. If they can spread it quickly, there's a chance here still for the Renegades. They work it through the hands. Once more hard-working middles. They collect the ball once again, looking to promote the footy. But they jammed in from the wing and shut it down. Manly across the board. Such aggressive up-and-in-the-face defence. Yeah, very strong there for Manly. And again, whether it's the midfield or on the try line, them getting off the line and pressing forward, we call that. Or some teams will say shooting or blitzing, different words. But them meeting the attack has been a feature. That's probably been the main difference between the two teams today, Jones. Certainly has. Manly's assertion without the ball has been unquestionable. Nice floating pass, but they got the coverage there in time. It's a good effort to stop them from Dale. Forward pass anyway, though. So with about six minutes to go, they pretty much need to score next set. Yeah, I think this is probably do or die here. And uh, I wanted to give another, a, a little nice call there in the corner there from Savannah Draper. I've, I've got a nice name for her, I think, uh, James. She's the no-nonsense referee, no fuss. She just gets it done. See her float in and on. There's been a lot of big calls in this grand final that she's made and not a lot of hoo-ha about it. Just get it done, keep the game flowing. So she's, uh, I know she's one of the uh, 
like up and comers, like she's been around for a while, but I think she's got a big future ahead of her there, Savannah Draper. Well, of course, they do say the best matches of sport, no matter what code it is, are the ones where you don't really notice the referees, and that's been exactly the case here in the grand final. It's been allowed to flow. We've seen plenty of good footy. No real questionable calls to speak of. You can just see the wind there taking the ball. It was definitely thrown backwards out of the hand. So we do have cyclonic-type activity floating about the pitch at the moment. The girls are doing a great job to deal with it because it's very tough out there. As Wilson goes for a little scooter self, tries to oh, open wow. them up, does exactly that. How about the footwork from Wilson? But again, such good cover defence. The scramble, superb from Manly. Mm, and another save try from Manly. And we talk about it all the time, James. You save two or three tries, that's like scoring three tries. So there's been half opportunities for both teams. Manly have taken their half opportunities. That's why they're up two tries to nil. Renegades probably have had a couple where they almost could have scored and Manly saved it, and, and that's the difference. This game could easily be two scores or forward pass it. But, um, yeah, instead it's Manly up two scores and running out of time here for the Renegades. Certainly are. This is the time for them to strike. It was Wignall who made that try-saving play in their own in goal. And they're all offside here, Manly. I think that might be a bit of gamesmanship coming into it, though, just resetting their defensive line with four to go. But what it does allow, though, for the Northern Beaches Renegades is to get their fresh troops back on the pitch. So they can launch something here. Berryman is back into the fold. So too is Aiken, who plays it now. Bosland also coming into the action. As they move forward now. Renegades with a big dummy. Still alive here. The good draw and pass. Oh, geez, I tell you what, they had opened them up there. The winger was expecting a ball immediately into her grasp, but they put it through the hands and had she get the depth. There might have been a little opportunity there. Still alive here for the Renegades, but the touch is now called. It's a nice touch that is ultimately made there from Van der Raiden. Yeah, they're only a fraction off Renegades. It's, it's a little bit bit of a shame, a little bit frustrating if you're on the, in the Northern Beaches camp because, like, Aiken and Berryman, and, like, if, if when Manly's a fraction off, they can make them pay, but they just haven't been quite as cohesive, I guess, as what they, they, they were in the semi final. So Wignall popping a pass here. Out now for Calms. Room to move for Smith. Good diving touch, though, from Berryman. Under three minutes to go. If they're smart and just see out this set here, that will do it for the Manly Seagulls. The clock will end up beating the Renegades who need three tries. Halliday, though, wants to put it beyond all doubt. She won't need to do so. That will still be enough here, Jason Stanton. Yeah, they just had to just had to complete the set. So the, the clock's definitely uh, not uh, helping the Renegades. And look, they have had a great tourney. They're probably going to run out of time here. And they would have had, you know, they had a bit of a harder, harder road. I think having the hard semi-final um, against Wolves End probably would have um, taken a bit of petrol out of their, out of their tank here on, on Grand Final Day. Um, I think it was Manly. I think uh, beat, beat the. Oh, here they post. go. They all oh, worked short side Ray beautifully and nearly put themselves in contention for something late here, but. You were mentioning, I mean, obviously a great run for both these sides to get here. Very little in the way of much opposition, certainly in the pool stages for these two teams. Yeah, mainly Northern Beach have been strong, but like equally, you know, Central Coast very strong as well. So will Walls End. And, uh, here comes French, French again, again, though. French splits them. Oh, what a ball back for Vera. But they just got the touch in time. But, geez, every time she gets possession here, Grace French, she's just causing oodles of problems for the defensive line. Yeah, French has been strong for Manly. Has his Wickham, and then on the uh, on the Renegade side of the ledger, definitely Berryman, Aiken, super impressive. They're, they're, these are names to watch. Um, but just just sort of back on the semi final, it's it, it isn't solely because of that. But Manly um, been a bit more dominant against Central Coast, maybe saved their legs a little bit in the semi. Whereas Northern Beaches try for try for try, really arm wrestle against Walls End. They might have taken a, you know, maybe a little bit of edge off their performance, maybe. Um, but, you know, Renegades, you know, really strong team. And I think pretty evenly matched up, I guess, apart from a couple of those um, individual efforts from uh, French. Well, it's important to point out, it is actually only two tries to nil. As it looks to potentially be a third, they do make a good try-saving touch there inside the final minute. One last play in this set here for the Manly team. Smythe rolls it back. Then receives it once again. And that might be the first actual error we've seen there from Manly. Just cutting back against the angle. Not reading the play correctly there. Between middle and link. So the Renegades will get the last use of the ball. You would imagine they'll throw it long. 
trying for something expansive to get something on the board with 20 seconds to go. They now head towards the sideline through Boslin. Berryman under pressure. And they won't complete the set, so Manly will get to savour every last moment of this. And Jason Stanton, I'm going to put it to you now. Who is our Guzman and Gomez player of the match? Well, we've got the Manly fans are going to count us down the 10 seconds. I think that's a siren going in the background. They've been strong 1 through 14, this Manly outfit. Very well drilled. Congratulations. They're, uh, they're our champions this week and, and waiting for them. In, uh, in the championship game, I think it's Canberra Brindy who edged out the Roosters last weekend. So the, the state championship's going to be a cracker and Canberra's going to have their work cut out for them uh, to try and handle this manly outfit. But um, uh, Guzmani Gomez, player of the match. I think the teams were pretty evenly matched with the exception of Grace French, the number 10 for manly. I was really impressed particularly with her work off the ball and her, her like composure in attack. So I think she was the difference today, Grace French. And big congrats to Manly and Renegades. They were both superb, but um, Manly showing their class at the end there, James. No, hard to disagree. Grace French with a superstar performance at full time in the 18 girls division. Manly run out two tries to nil, five points to nil, victors. But don't go too far. Our last match of the day is perhaps the best that we've got for you. We move to the 18 boys grand final. All the action in about five minutes time between the Central Coast Dolphins and the Northern Beaches Renegades.